Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, straight into action, no messing about. The Eddie Hearn Matchroom Show, screened on Sky, at, at your call, last night. 21st of June 2019 now eight fights on the show Eddie ended up going six and one and one on the night six wins one loss and a draw so we'll start out at the bottom and work our way up, shall we? Very, very easy to do. Very easy to do. Uh, for those of you that uh, are not familiar with the Your Call, it's uh, it's quite famous. It's uh, been going years and years and years. It's ancient, in fact, and. Eddie Hearn tends to use it when he knows that he doesn't have big ticket sellers on. Now, you know, you've got 16 fighters on that show and 8 of them have got to sell tickets. So if they all do 200 tickets apiece, it's a sellout, isn't it? But it weren't a sellout, were it? There were tickets left. Now, that's what he's left with now. So... And you don't really want the ticket sellers. Them who don't sell tickets, you all got to your call. Because he is struggling at the moment. Now, he's not going to admit it. And neither will Matchroom FC. But it is what it is, isn't it? So. But, uh, but anyway, let's, let's start off with. Uh, Char Charlie Frankham. Uh, E1, KO in first round against Ilgvars Crossless, 1 and 4. So Charlie Franken moves to 2 and 0, and Guy fought had a losing record. Now, which is usually the case, at the, well, you know, when there's a guy who's in his second fight, I mean, he's got to practice on somebody, hasn't he? So. Well, like I said, Charlie, uh, Charlie Frankham, he did the business. That's all, all, all he can do, really. A bit like Tyson Fury, isn't it, really, against Tom Swartz, the seventh best uh, heavyweight in Germany. I mean, a bit <laughs> quite shocking, actually, considering the hype and the profile. But Tyson can only beat who's put in front of him, can't he, really? And, you know, he looked... Uh, he looked strong the other night, so well done Tyson, but getting back to this show, well done Charles Frankham in your second fight at Super Featherweight, so good old uh, Charlie uh, Frankham. Next up, well, somebody in a third fight, uh, the one, the only, Shannon Courtney, who uh, apparently gets inbox messages about people wanting her socks. How strange is that? I don't know, unless it's just rubbish that she's making up to try and make herself feel important. But she beat somebody who uh, we, we don't really know how she got a license. People in boxing keep saying, How she get a license? Valerie. Sepitovska and basically she's shocking she were a cook she's a cook actually but I don't know how she's got a license and some of these some of these women things they, they need looking at don't they now because you know it's uh, Shannon Courtney right is the number one in England in her weight division but guess how many is in Shannon Courtney's weight division in England yes you've got it just one so Shannon Courtney, 
right, can never fight for a British title. Did you know that? Shannon Courtney cannot fight for a British title because she's the only female in the country at bantamweight. How's about that one? How crazy is that? Shannon Courtney is one of one in England. So she can say, I'm number one in England. Yeah, because you are the only female fighter in the UK who's a bantamweight. How fucking crazy is that? How, and there's only 117 in the world. And she's just fought a woman who's ranked. <laughs> 117 oh my fucking good god what what is this now is this now turning into a fucking joke what is this now what what's going on here so shannon courtney is the number one in britain because she's the only one and the girl she fought is the 117th in the world, but there is only 117. What the fucking hell are Sky serving us up now? What the fuck was that? That is fucking unbelievable. Shannon's ranked 59. It's not her fault, is it? But it's just showing that women's boxing is now a fucking joke, isn't it? It's making a mockery, all them girls who, who, who fucking put the time in. You know, we've got Olympians beating up on nobodies, and and then we've got uh, no, uh, and then we've got people who have took boxing up, and the fighting just, well, ah, fucking that. Let me just let's just move on. We'll let Shannon Courtney have a, an insert into into this, but fucking, she can have an insert on the program. If you get to get your picture up on Porky videos from now on. It means that, that you know uh, you, you must be doing all right because if I don't like you, you'll not fucking get on here. But right, next up, lightweight, Ofer Jones the third against Michael Hor Horobin. Uh, so Ofer Jones uh, in his in the, in his second fight. Uh, beating Michael Horobin and he's 2 and 11 so he's got a losing record 2 11 and 0 and it was a first round knockout so basically the first three fights have gone one round the first fight lasted 1 minute 40 the second fight lasted 4 minutes 17 the third fight yet again 1 minute 40 and the fourth fight lasted 12 minutes 19 seconds so 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, 20. 16 minutes, 37 seconds for the first four fights. Oh my fucking good God. Right. Featherweight, Reese Bellotti. Uh, Reese Bellotti, Featherweight. 13 and 2 against Josie. Bendana 10, 11 and 4, another losing record, so that's the first four losing records. Uh, KO, bad KO as well, round 4. So KO'd him with a body shot. Uh, pff, what can you say? Do you know what I mean? Reese Bilotti, he's a bad man. But. What can you say to that? It's a fucking joke, isn't it? I mean, this card here. I mean, God, you've got Frank Smith with the spots. A good old Frank Smith, spotty Frank Smith. He's running around saying that this is a fucking great card. I mean, what fucking planet are these fuckers on? What planet are these fuckers on? That's what I want to know. Fucking dog shit. Dog shit card. But you know, it, it, it is what it fucking is, isn't it? it it's, it's boxing, isn't it? It's, I'm disgusted. I am totally disgusted with that card. It, 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 it wasn't that bad. 
That card was fucking terrible. Really, 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 really terrible, but... I mean, all Frank Smith at Matchroom is good for now. He's fucking... Well, we all know what's going on. He's trying his best to get Eubank to sign for Eddie Earn. That's the word. Everybody in boxing knows it. Can you imagine Frank Smith there going to bed at night with Emily Eubank saying, Can you ring Chris up and ask him if he'll sign for Eddie? Go on, Emily. Can you ring him up and ask him? We're fucking desperate. But, you know, it is what it fucking is, isn't it? But... So, but, uh, I don't know, I mean, Reese Bilotti, I like Reese Bilotti, he, he seems a decent kid, uh, but, it is what it is, isn't it, but, uh, the card on the whole, a fucking load of dog shit, and they'll know that, that's why they put it on at your call, you know, you pay fucking three grand for your call, Fucking hell, we pay seven grand for Ponds Ford. Three thousand quid your call. Very cheap. You know, and a few other extras in. You know, it's it's an it's a, Don't forget Eddie Earn, 20 shows a year. He'd be on three million a year. 150 grand a show that works out at. That show there has been put on for fucking chicken feed. That show has been put on with ticket fucking money. I'm telling you now. But then you've got Dwayne Sinclair on next. 10 and 0. Well, he got beat on points by Anthony Fox. Now, I don't know what to say about that. They've, uh, the referee, Mark Bates, gave it to Fox. And you probably could have given it to him as well. But there were a few raised eyebrows. So Eddie didn't have it all his own way, did he? He didn't have it all his own way. Uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? You know. It is what it is, but uh, onwards and upwards for uh, Anthony Fox beating Dwayne Sinclair. Onwards and upwards. Uh, Connor, uh, sorry, Craig Richards. No, Craig Richards. I like Craig Richards. Will he fight Boatsy? I don't know, but I do like Craig Richards. Um, I think he's very skillful. Whether he beats Boatsy or not, I don't know. But uh, Craig Richards, let's not forget, he has got a loss on his record uh, to Frank Buglione on points. Uh, but he seems to have sorted his head out since then. So it's all good stuff in it, but Craig Richards against Boatsy, I think that's an hard fight for him. I think Boatsy beats him if he even gets the fight. But uh, good, good on Craig Richards. I hope he fights Boatsy and I hope he ices him. I really do. Uh, I hope he beats him. He deserves it. He deserves a, a chance against Boatsy and getting paid money. Now, Ted Cheeseman up next. He drew against Kieran Conway. Uh, I don't know what to make of that fight, to be honest. British title fight. Uh, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. I don't know at all. I don't know. Uh, Terry O'Connor went with Matchroom, didn't he? He went with a Matchroom narrative. Obviously, Marcus McDonnell went with a Frank Warren narrative. So, who knows? Uh, Ian Lewis, John Lewis, didn't do anybody favours on night. I'm surprised he didn't stop the fight early doors, because Ian John Lewis should be a Guinness Book of Records. He's the only man in South of London who can fucking stop a bus on Old Kent Road that's doing 90 mile an hour. Jesus, remember the Enzo Macarinelli fight he stopped, he and John Lewis. Den's like, don't give Ian John Lewis any stick porkies, me mate, listen. Ian John Lewis, I don't even know how he's a fucking referee, to be honest. He, he is like the Jonah of refereeing, isn't he? But all you people out there who like Ian John Lewis, I do apologise, but I'm trying to say it with a bit of tongue in cheek because Ian John Lewis is a walking disaster. Let's have it fucking right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But, uh, 
I don't know, should we give Ian John Lewis an insert? Should we have a photograph of Ian John Lewis up on Nicola? Stick a photograph of Ian John Lewis up. He is the man. That man is a fucking savage, but yeah, it was a draw for Ted Cheeseman against Kieran Conway. Uh, I feel for Ted Cheeseman, but it won't affect him. He's still got the Scots Vitch Gerald fight next. If he loses that, he will fight Anthony Fowler. So, it is what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Anthony Fowler's fighting Brian Rose. They've dug Brian Rose up uh, from Symmetry. <laughs> got, uh, do you know what I mean? Brian Rose is going to go down for a middle. They're, not only are they digging him up, they're making him fucking lose weight. So good old match room. They love all. They love all that, don't they? Protecting the fighters. Health and safety first for match room. Ask Kelbrook. Ask Kelbrook. Ask Lee Purdy about when he was sat in the sauna. Fucking hell fire, eh? Lee Purdy and Barry Hearn sat in the sauna in. Uh, in New York, were it or Atlantic City? I think it was New York when they fought Devin Alexander. Yeah, Lee Purdy in sauna. Stick Lee Purdy up, Nicola. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the card so far were dog shit, dog shit. And then we come to Conor Ben, who lit up the place. I'm not going to give Conor Ben any stick. He looked the business. After George Groves were giving it the big licks, saying that Conor Ben was going to box and then take him out in the second half, but Conor Ben didn't, did he? He couldn't wait, he got giddy and he took him out, and fucking quite rightly so. You don't get paid for overtime. Now, whether or not Conor Ben can beat Josh Kelly or any other guys in his division at, at his weight, welterweight, I don't know, but uh, Conor Ben, let me tell you, he looks like he's quite a, a powerful little fucker, let me tell you. I'd like to see Conor Ben fight Tyrone Nurse, pick up the phone, Barry Hearn, give Dennis Hobson a ring, we can sort that fight out for you. Or get in touch with me through channel, or get my number off uh, people in industry, and I can sort that out for you, Eddie. Get Tyrone Nurse out on a Dennis Hobson show. We'll pay Conor Ben's purse. You want to get Conor Ben up here? Tyrone Nurse ices Conor Ben. I'm telling you now, Tyrone Nurse ices him. So. Or if you want to get Josh Kelly, get Josh Kelly on the scene. Tyrone Nurse will step up. Tyrone Nurse will take Josh Kelly on or Connor Ben. Because them two are fucking protected species. None of them want to fight David Evanesian, let me tell you. None of them. Both of them shit houses. they don't want to fight anybody, all they want to do is protect their hoes now Josh Kelly's been found out Conor Ben, well he's had a win on it where he can look good doing but let's fucking have it right he'll not beat Josh Kelly and also the guy he's just fought, fucking hell Eddie were fucking bigging him up as some kind of fucking god you know what I mean? The guy's in his fucking... He's 30 fucking 6 year old this year. Cut this guy. That guy we, 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 we had a girlfriend in comprehensive school before Connor, Connor Ben were fucking born. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? The guy's had 32 fights. He's 2, 4, 6... Two, one, four, one. He's gone 3 and 4 in his last fucking 7. And he's last two, four, five, two. And his last ten fights, he's gone fucking five and five, that guy there. 36 year old this year he is. No wonder Conor Ben punched fuck on it. Eddie Hearn were talking about him. Like he were a... Because he were from Finland, out that way, Scandinavian. Eddie Hearn were talking about him like he were a fucking smaller version of Kessler. Fucking do me a favour, Eddie. Fucking do me a favour. Jesus.
Do you know what I mean? They were talking about him like he were fucking Kessler. Unbelievable. Leonard, Bu Leonard Bundo knocked him out three years ago for vacant European title. Leonard Bundo. Do you know what I mean? And then, you know, he fought Mohamed Mo Mo Mi Mi or something. And he was going on about that and he lost a unanimous decision and it was close and that. Well, it fuck close and it was a European Union welterweight, Eddie. Not the European, it was the Union, the fucking B belt. Stop giving me that fucking knackers. Do you know what I mean? And the other one, Eddie, were the European Union as well, and that were a fucking unanimous decision. That were even worse than the other one against Jordy Weiss. Eddie, you fucking lying bastard. I was racking my brains all day thinking, I can't remember him having a split decision. It were with Vargas, yeah, but it weren't it weren't for fucking European title, that were a fucking Nabba welterweight fucking belt. Do me a fucking favour. Fucking hell, Eddie. It were in fucking Canada for a Nabba belt, not the European belt, you fucking lying bastard, Eddie. They fucking jump out your belts, it were for a poxy fucking Nabba belt. Fucking hell, on, on a Lee Baxter show in fucking Canada, Ontario. Fuck me, Eddie. Jesus Christ. Fucking lying bastard. You fucking lying bastard, Eddie Earn, you fucking liar. Liar, liar, liar. Eh? Unbelievable. Eddie Earn, you fucking liar. But, uh, it is what it is, isn't it? But, that's the Eddie Earns show. Overall, Eddie ended up going 6 and 1 and 1 on the night at your call. Totally a fucking bismol. The good thing about the show for Eddie Earn on the night was this. Right. Connor Ben won. He had a lot of pressure on him, right? Let me tell you why Connor Ben had pressure on him. Connor Ben's got lo he's got fucking hundred thousand pound cars, jewellery watches. Buying properties up, he's got sponsors coming out in his fucking arsehole, right? A lot of pressure on Connor Ben. He's got Wasserman Group behind him, they've just employed George Groves. So Connor Ben has got to get a world ranking to get all these fucking commercial deals. And he has to keep that, oh, you know, he can't be beat. So what they do, they get him an easy win, right? Like Connor Ben, he had that easy win, didn't he, for that WBA belt. They get him an international belt, it builds a relationship up with the sanctioning body. Now, are you listening to me? Because this is what I'm true, what I'm telling you. He fought Cedric Piano for a vacant WBA Continental Welterweight belt. Right? That means you pay quite a bit in sanctioning fees, you have to fly them all over. You're basically buying your ranking. Now, it was Piano, right? It was a Piano rematch. Now, Payanu is ranked 236 on box rec. So Payanu and Connor Ben, 236 against an 192. Them two are fighting for a belt that gets them a ranking in the top 15 with the WBA. But because it's Connor Ben, well, they gave him a ranking at number 6, didn't they? And it caused fucking mayhem last July. Well, it were in, it were in August's rankings, actually. It caused mayhem. The fight was 28th of July. First time rankings were up. Conor Ben's in at number 6. Fucking mayhem. And people in the boxing industry were disgusted. Matchmakers, managers, trainers. Everybody were disgusted. How the fucking hell have they done this? And it's not Conor Ben's fault, but... Really, it's the people behind him, innit? Because what Wasserman Group have done, Charlie Sims and all them, they want to get Conor Ben a ranking... But they also want to earn money because it's a money business. It's, you've heard people say it's a business, isn't it? It's a business. Now, Conor Ben gets the ranking with the WBA. These commercial people have got to cough up. Now, they might look at Conor Ben turning pro and say, right, we're not giving you any money. But if you get a top 10 ranking, 
we'll give you something because Eddie had to put that to him well what if we get him a top 10 ranking they'll say yeah we'll pay you some money then so they get in the ranking don't they? they don't get it straight away they play ball don't they they chip away then they get him with a ranking he gets a bit of a profile and then they start sticking him in shot windows with JD Sports that's how it works now you'll have fighters who are better than him I'm not going to say any names, but there's fighters in England that are better than Conor Ben, who Conor Ben won't go near. Now, he jumped up now to number 10 in England, but I'll tell you who Conor Ben's in his weight division here, and he won't go near him. Amir Khan, number one, he beats Conor Ben. Josh Kelly, number two, they're saying Josh Kelly for Conor Ben next, right? They won't, they won't want that fight. Chris Jenkins beats him. Bradley Skeet beats him. Echo Izuman, he beats him. Johnny Garton smashes him. Gary Kakoran, he beats him. Liam Taylor, I'm not so sure. Tyron Nurse, he beats him. Connor Ben, he's 10th. Tyron Nurse has too much experience for Connor Ben. If Tyron Nurse wins on Dennis's show, I'm going to fucking go out my way with everybody that I know and go all guns blazing at them fuckers at Matchroom to get Connor Ben in with Tyron Nurse. Because I'm going to show you what happens when somebody who's got a bit of experience goes up against these Flash Harrys. Connor Ben ain't got a jab for starters. He's all right and Yeah, he can dig. His old man could dig, but he never had a jab. Now, it's not Conor Ben's fault he's got the Ben name, is it? He's going to capitalise on it, but the fans are having the piss to cart them. So what they've done, they create a belt for him, they build a relationship up with the WBA, Conor Ben fights a guy, right? Cedric Piano, 236, world ranked. Conor Ben, 192, he beats him, he then jumps to number 6. But BoxRec don't give him the credit, but the WBA do. But then you look at the rankings. Look at the people above him in the WBA rankings. They'd all fucking kill him, wouldn't they? The world ranked fighters. Amir Khan's actually ranked number nine in the world box rec. Connor Ben's ranked 192. Oh, he's ranked 141 now, Connor Ben. He's just took the ranking of the guy he's just beat. But could you imagine the guy that Conor Ben has just beat, right? The guy that Conor Ben has just beat, right? Let's have a look at, say, middleweights. Let's go to middleweight and look at a guy who ranked 141, where that Conor Ben, where Conor Ben's just fought a guy ranked 141, right? The 141st ranked middleweight in the world is Troy Williamson have you ever heard of him he's from England 10 and 0 and a draw from Darlington could you imagine putting him in with a number six ranked guy with the WBA do you know what I mean it'd be a fucking bloodbath wouldn't it it would be a bloodbath could you imagine somebody like Daniel Jacobs or Charlo or, or Billy Joe Saunders or somebody like that in top six in world in a um, box wreck or fighting against him be fucking unbelievable and this is why these rankings need to be looked at Andy Patterson is correct on boxing asylum they've got to be looked at but big promoters like Eddie Earn they're going to manipulate the rankings to get these kids who are marketable deals now there's other kids like Dennis is now we've now got Tyrone Nurse fighting with, with us he's not as marketable as Conor Ben he's a former British champion he's got a better record than Conor Ben but who's heard of Tyrone Nurse but what would Tyrone Nurse do to Conor Ben that same weight now what would he do to Conor Ben he'd smash him to pieces wouldn't he Tyrone Nurse would smash Conor Ben to pieces but they won't mention Tyrone Nurse's name but we'll let you just watch what's going to happen on 5th of July after Dennis as lad Tyrone Nurse wins Josh Kelly and Conor Ben they're all fair game as far as we're concerned time to step up none of them have got a fucking British title to the name have they they're all going for these monkey belts and you know trying to trying to dodge the issue so it is what it is, isn't it? But I wish Conor Ben all the best. But like I've just said, uh, Tyrone Nurse beats Conor Ben and Denny Sobson will fucking back him all the way. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport, as you all know. 
I hope you like all these videos that I've done. I hope you like the chocolate video I did as well. I just did that for a bit of a giggle. So don't be too harsh on me. Shout out to all you haters. Keep on following. The channel is flying. I'm looking forward to a healthy week with your channel this week. So keep watching. Ta-ta. Oink, oink.